football season came to a close in Austin. You're watching Double T Insider. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Taylor Peters alongside Robert Giovanetti. You know, Coach Wells was really intentional after the game in his post-game press conference to so talk about just the potential that exists in some of those young players, and you see it with Eric Azukama and, and Keyshawn Carter, who had big games there in Austin. Keyshawn had a, had a really outstanding performance, and Coach Wells wasn't trying to sugarcoat it. He was disappointed for the seniors, really wanted to win for those guys, wanted to give those guys a bowl game, wanted them to have a better experience their senior year, but is building for the future also. And it's really tough, too, to know the hard work that those players and, and really those coaches have invested in, in this year and not to be able to get the results that you want What's maybe the biggest message that these players, especially those ones coming back, can learn from a season like this? The, the thing that stood out for those of us that see it every day and around it every day, and again, you are what your record says you are, but they fought hard. They never gave up. They played hard for Coach Wells and that staff all season long. A lot of times they could have just folded the tents and, and given up in a game or a situation. Didn't do that. And those are the kind of things that you can look back on the spring, build on that in the spring going towards next uh, fall. Well, and as we approach signing day two, I know that this staff is really excited about a lot of those talented young players that will come in. What difference will it make for Coach Wells and his staff to get his hands on these players immediately instead of coming in and, and developing and, and maybe changing a group? The, the early signing period has changed so much, including when a coach takes over. So he comes in in December. He's having to learn the guys he has. He's trying to hold on to the recruits that have already committed to the staff. He doesn't have a chance to really look at what the roster needs. Now he has had a whole year. Coach Wells is to look at what they need, how they can progress. Yeah. He can get them with uh, the strength conditioning program earlier. It's going to make a world of difference. Lady Raider basketball was also on the road last week and they would secure their first tournament title uh, under head coach Marlene Stallings. That was a huge experience for this group. To go on the road over the holidays, all those things. Again, a new group trying to mesh with each other and uh, that was a big win, that, that second game especially to win the championship. And we saw Crystal Carr kind of start to come on offensively and I think it's really challenging for her oh, you know yeah. she started off the season not really scoring as many points and she's used to averaging more than 20 points a game you know last season and for her to kind of be selfless and sort of become who the team needs is is hard to do but commendable too. Chrislyn had to be the person last year. She had to take the shots. She had to be the one to try to create the offense. It's different this year. You have a lot of different players that can score in double figures. We're seeing that in every game. It, and she has had to figure out what her role is. And that's something that will continue to improve as we get into conference play. And we've seen a lot of players kind of come on and, and flash and have big games here and there. But Alexis Tucker has started to do that consistently. And so for a freshman, that speaks a lot about just her maturity and, and her calming nature there on the court. I thought the very first time I, th I saw Alexis play that she plays older than, than she is. She doesn't make silly mistakes. She seems very cerebral in the way she plays, and she is able to find her way to the bucket. But Red Raider basketball didn't find quite the same luck in their tournament in Vegas. What did you see from them facing off against Iowa and Creighton, uh, a couple of losses for this team? What happened in both those games is what we've seen all year long. They've had trouble starting. They've had trouble getting out of the gates, and you've face tougher competition this time. And uh, again, you go back to the resiliency. You see this with, with Coach Beard programs all the time. This group was resilient and they had a chance late against both those teams, uh, but just couldn't get it done. Get, couldn't get over the hump. You get you put yourself in too big of a hole. And this, again, was some of the best competition that they've seen so far. You have, for the first time, facing up against Power 5 teams. I mean, you can learn a lot from a loss, and I think that that's what Coach Beard is going to come back and really drive in with his team as they're preparing to move on and face better competition before they get to Big 12. Watching po uh, Coach Beard post game, he seemed more frustrated after the Iowa game, I think, against, the Creight and against Creighton. He, he liked the effort he saw from his group, especially very late in, in that game. I was in the Big Ten. They're used to mm -hmm. playing this tough kind of physical game and again these are the kind of games that, that help you when you get into February and March and you had mentioned it earlier too this is just a group that's trying to figure out how to play together and you you can't recreate big moments outside of big moments and so I think for TJ Shannon and Jemias Ramsey and Big Russ it's it's a challenge for some of those guys to just figure out how to be in those big moments and, it, and it's easy for fans to say wow I went to Elite Eight went to the National Championship game this is just expected of us now we just roll out the ball and, and people are going to roll over for Tech Tech it's yeah. not going to be that way you've got a target on your back and you have to give it your best every night. Well, coming up, we'll talk a little bit more Lady Raider basketball and their big tournament victory on Double T Insider. He's a West Texas native who donned the scarlet and black on the football field in the late 1950s. The two-year letter winner earned a bachelor's degree in education before graduating from medical school. 
As an orthopedic surgeon, he served the Amarillo community for nearly three decades, never forgetting his ties to Texas Tech. He's been a member of the Board of Regents and the Chancellor's Council. But Dr. Bob Stafford's proudest achievement is family. These are the real people of Texas Tech. Yes, ma'am, there he is. 1,000 for Brittany Thor in her career. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is... Blocked by Brewer. Blocked again. <laughs> Welcome back into Double T Insider. That player right there is has been huge for this Lady Raider program. She's the lone senior this year reaching an incredible milestone in her career with 1,000 points. But she's a huge part of the reason that this team is able to be successful. How have you seen her kind of just come into her role as a senior this year? And it seems like we talk about her every week yeah. and, and for a good reason. But she's somebody that's transformed herself emotionally, mentally, physically, from her freshman year to where she is now, it's worlds apart and she was good as a freshman. She's now gotten to herself where she can be a mm -hmm. dominant force every game out there. And even though she may be not as physical as she wants to be, she still is finding herself in those kind of positions. She's scoring big baskets. She's uh, almost, she's a walking, close to triple-double every time she hits the floor. No, she really is, and she scored 31 points and had 19 rebounds in those two games in that tournament. I, I mean, we just talk over and over about how effective she is on the court, but she's a huge leader for this team, too. She rallies them. She made it really, and we talked about Chrislyn Carr earlier, that was one thing that she said after those first couple of games, is I want to do the best I can to encourage Chrislyn to just kind of be who she is in the moment, and that's something that that Brittany is really good at, is identifying her teammates. And it does almost sound cliche, but I love... Brittany's attitude more than anything else. She has been through so much with this program. She stuck with it. She's believed in what Coach Marlene is trying to do and is paying dividends for now on the court. And she has said a couple of times too when talking to the media that she wants to be a more physical player. And so we'll be able to see her kind of showcase that as we get to conference play. But regardless, a really exciting weekend for Lady Raider basketball there in San Diego. Here in San Diego as Tech will go to 5-0 on the year. 
And you heard Coach Stallings start talking about this last year. Once we get the right players and we can start implementing the right system, you're going to see this team really start to take off. And, and we've kind of seen that come into fruition here. What I've seen so far is what Coach Marlene said when she got here she wants to do. This team is able to shoot the threes. They're getting up and down the yeah. floor. They're going to be hard to handle for a lot of teams. Exciting things coming for Lady Raider basketball and head coach Marlene Stallings. She joins us next here on Double T Insider. Lady Raider basketball secures its first tournament title in five years. I'm joined here on set by head coach Marlene Stallings. Coach, in these early tournaments, you can really learn a lot about your team. What was maybe the most exciting thing that you were able to see from your group there in San Diego? Yeah, well, winning a tournament was big. Uh, as you mentioned, we haven't done that as a program in five years. Uh, but to be able to go on the road and win on someone else's home court, you know, San Diego's in the championship game, it's, it's their home court, and they're known as a very strong defensive team. And, uh, and it was very physical. And I think to be able to handle that, the game was tight throughout. Um, to be able to, to maintain the lead, handle the last couple of minutes, um, with everything they were throwing at us, they threw everything at us in those last couple of minutes. And to come out on top and secure the win is growth for our team. Um, it's an example of something that a year ago um, we wouldn't have handled mm -hmm. that as well. So I was really excited about the growth that we showed in that part of the game. Well, and that growth just on the court too, but this is a really connected mm -hmm. team. And so for you and your team and your staff to be able to celebrate Thanksgiving together as a group, how critical are some of those experiences that you get to have with your team off the court? Yeah, it was a good time um, out there. We had a couple extra days and we got to celebrate Thanksgiving um, meal together. We went to an Italian place on the water, not tr non-traditional Thanksgiving, but they loved it. We actually had practice that day. Um, and just the time together because it was um, not only Thanksgiving, but our first road trip. And it was good to, to be able to spend a little more time and, and to see some of our kids' families. You know, we have three young ladies that have uh, Cal are from California, one that has California ties by way of Hawaii. And we had a large group of people there. You could hear Raider power throughout the arena, and that was, that was really Really fun to see. Well, and after that tournament too, Brittany Brewer would be named co-conference player of the week and she's just been so consistent for, mm -hmm. for your team. What do you hope that she can take away from this non-conference slate to kind of prepare her for the really big and physical opponents that she's going to see in Big 12 play? Yes, and we're really working that, you know, she the fundamentals, she stays very tight with those, that she continues to dominate in the rebounding category and at the basket and uh, just get more and more confident as, as she goes along the, through this non-conference conference schedule in preparation for what's coming in Big 12. And it's one thing to get to see some really exciting flashes from a freshman, but to have them do that as consistent as Alexis Tucker has done, she's already been named Big 12 Freshman of the Week. How pleased are you with just kind of the development and the growth that she's had, but more importantly, the way that she's been able to execute on the court? Well, I think just her common poise, you know, and a lot of times freshmen don't know what they don't know, and that's a good thing. I think she's a uh, an example of that. I mean, she goes out there and she's she's putting up almost double digit numbers in the rebounding category and the point in the point category almost uh, every game for us. You know, she had nine rebounds in that championship game. The rebounding piece is real really crucial. And the thing I, I like about where she's at right now is she's she's very eager to continue to grow and learn and develop and understand that she can't stay where she's at and she's continuing. She's hungry for that next step and very coachable in that manner. And I think that that's exciting for us as a staff as well, but just um, great young lady. And this Big 12 SEC Challenge will provide a really important opportunity for your team to kind of get a measuring stick of, of where they're at as a group and to face another Power 5 school. How much is your staff looking forward to just kind of set, sending your kids out and letting them maybe cut loose a little bit against a team that's maybe one of the most talented ones that you've seen at this point? Mm -hmm. Well, one of big big group of fans there for sure you know we're, we're hoping for a really big crowd it's our biggest non-conference game for sure and um, I think our team is excited about the game they're looking forward to the game for that challenge um, like I said it's a big challenge to go to San Diego and win that tournament so I think we've been battle tested a little bit mm -hmm. and then now to play a power uh, power five school in our house on our floor uh, is another great opportunity in, in a lot of ways and I think we're, we're very anxious for, for game time tomorrow night. Well, we are too, Coach. Good luck as you face off against Ole Miss and for the rest of this non-conference slate. Still to come on Double T Insider, we sit down with head soccer coach Tom Stone.
Welcome back into Double T Insider. I'm joined here on set by Red Raider soccer head coach Tom Stone. Coach, I know that every year you have high expectations for your team and for your players. What are your overall thoughts and just the way that your team was able to play this year in the Big 12 and then be able to advance to the second round of the NCAA tournament? I think it's bittersweet. You know, this team was young. We lost our entire back line, our goalkeeper, and our probably our best player in Jordan Duke. And so we thought, well, we'll set the expectations at a reasonable level. But the culture here is we always want to chase championships so you can't deny the hunger that was in the locker room but we were pretty realistic and then when we exceeded those expectations and had the best defense in the league and our our freshman goalkeeper took over mm -hmm. and was outstanding and Kirsten was the MVP of the league offensively then all of a sudden our expectations went up and of course once they went up then it's even more devastating when mm -hmm. when it ends you know coming a point away from the Big 12 title and going to the second round I think this team had another round in them I think Michigan deserves a lot of credit for the way they played on the day they were the more mature team I think physically a little stronger just um, just better on the day so we got to own that and that's what the spring is for is to go back and say all right here's the standard to advance past that round we've been past that round before uh, but not with any of these players mm -hmm. so it's an education it's a training model I came in yesterday first day back at school went up to our training facility to get some stuff done and all of a sudden I see all these players coming in and I'm like oh my gosh do they think we're practicing today they were all just going out to train so that's what you want from your team. You know, obviously we're not even allowed to set that up. They were just all getting out there to train the first day back and they could have easily taken yesterday off. So the culture's right, the kids are right. These young women are, are something to behold and, and very, we're very proud of their effort and attitude. So disappointing at the end, but thrilled with all that went on and the future looks bright. And I mean, the future looks bright because of those players that you just mentioned and that, that culture. But another huge part of that is the newcomers that you bring in. And just a couple of weeks ago, we sat in this studio and we talked about signing day. And so as right. you go back out on the road in this off season and you talk to more uh, future players for this program to be able to say seven NCAA tournament appearances in the last eight seasons, that's who we are. I mean, does that just kind of make you more excited to get back out on the road and, and bring in some more talent? It does, and there's something to be said for consistency because now whole new pl groups of players, you know, players that helped us build it are gone. So we don't have any of those players left to say, well, we did it and we're still doing it. It's a whole new crop of players that are doing it and holding the high standards. So you're exactly right. And I think, you know, the young players that want to play after college have become something that we've been excited about being able to recruit and a lot of players in the pros now. So that's generating a lot of interest in who we are. And of course, if anyone comes to a game, you know, they can't deny the atmosphere that we have. So with thousands of fans in the stands and the, the rowdy Red Raiders bringing us victories. And, you know, the, our last game at home was a big NCAA win over Pepperdine. That's the lasting impression for our fans and for recruits and everybody. So, you know, we just pick it up again in the spring and, and get after it. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Double T Insider. Welcome back into Double T Insider. So many of our teams spent Thanksgiving together, and that really is the essence of family. We hear it so much in college athletics. Texas Tech Athletics, Kirby Hokut starts from the top. It's all about yeah. family, making your family important, making the team be a family. Our yeah. athletic department is like a big family. Coming up this week, though, for Red Raider basketball, it's the Big East and Big 12 Challenge. They're facing off against DePaul tonight at 7.30. And then next week, facing off against number one Louisville in Madison Square Garden. That's Tuesday of next week, tip-off at 6 o'clock. Meanwhile, for the Lady Raiders, it's the SEC Big 12 Challenge tonight, Wednesday. Lady Raiders will host Ole Miss. That'll be at 7 o'clock at the United Supermarkets Arena. That's all of our time for now. Thanks so much for being with us today on Double T Insider. We'll see you next week. And if you missed any part of today's show, head on over to TexasTech.com or download the Texas Tech TV app on Apple TV and Roku.